Hi, it's Elise here of Bowman Library with a whole new middle grade book spotlight. So for this week, we are taking a look at books that explore the theme of family and what family may mean to us, what family may mean to others. Keep in mind, your family doesn't have to be just limited to people that you're born into a family with. We, get, like, we can choose who we want to be part of our family families. And the books we're going to take a look at today explore that. They explore what family what means to these characters and maybe how they, how it means to us. So we have a little bit of some different stuff. There's some historical mixed in. There's some little bit of science fiction. There's some realistic. Little something for everyone because family knows no boundaries. Yeah. Okay. So on that note, let's get started with our six books with our first one that's one of my personal favorites love this book. The War That Saved My Life. Oh, yeah. So, Ada's living in London and she's not allowed to leave their one room apartment on account of what is called a club foot. And what that means is like her foot doesn't face like forward as normal. Like for Ada, her foot is like completely almost backwards. Okay. So, her mother, this is 1940s, you know, World War II was at its peak. Her mother does not allow her to leave the apartment because she's embarrassed by Ada. And when London starts to be bombed by German airplanes as part of their Battle of Britain raids, children are then sent to go live in the countryside. You know, if you've ever read or like watched like Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, and, the, and um, the, pens the pens of children were sent off, you know, to go live with their great uncle so they were safe. That's real stuff that happened. And that's what's going on in our book here. Um, Ada's mother, though, decides that she's going to send Ada's younger brother, Jamie, but she's not going to send Ada. Ada doesn't think that's fair. Like, why is her life less important than her younger brother's? So Ada decides that she's going to take matters into her own hands. And she sneaks out of the house and she joins Jamie on this train going off to the countryside. They have no idea where they're, where they're going. Now, as the train stops make, starts making stops and children get off, they get placed with families. Soon their numbers start to start to dwindle and Ada and Jamie soon find that they are the only ones left. And they are then given to this woman named Susan. But here, here's kind of a catch. Like Susan didn't really sign up for this. Susan doesn't like children. Like Ada and Jamie are just kind of basically like dumped on her at her farm. But life starts to change for everyone, and as the war starts to take its toll, both mentally, physically, emotionally, yeah, no one knows what's going to be happening in the ending. They, they don't, yeah. But as they start to come together and start to form their own unique family, Ada starts feeling like she might actually have a place for the first time where she belongs. Again, an amazing story. Love this one. There's a sequel that's already out. Oh yeah, the war that saved my life. Inside out and back again. So Ha is living in Vietnam when it falls in the 1970s and her family must flee the country in order to survive. Now making their way on ships and through refugee camps, they finally land in Alabama. There it is, she is forced to give up everything she has known her entire life and she has to try to fit in. But that's gonna be easier said than done for when you're an immigrant in Alabama in 1975. She's bullied at school, she doesn't know how to speak English, and she's just plain angry as she misses her home, friends and her, and her father that they left behind. Ha soon learns though that as long as you have family, you can make home anywhere. Now this is loosely placed on the author's life. This story will have you filled with so many emotions as you read it, but the experiences Ha and her family faced on their journey and then living here in America, an amazing story. It's a novel in verse, so it's told through poetry type formats, but I can promise you this. If you don't like poetry, you will still love this book, Inside Out and Back Again. Counting by seven. So 12 year old Willow is different from mostly everyone. She's adopted and she's basically like 
a genius. So like, for example, when she starts a new school and she has to take the state test because you know, if you're in school, there's a lovely SOL state test you have to take. When she takes her state test, she finishes it in 17 minutes and gets, are you ready? A perfect score. Oh yeah, that's right. Now, this does lead people to think that she's cheated, even though she didn't. Things all come to a halt though. When Willow's parents, like her adoptive parents, they were killed in a car accident. And and Willow finds herself orphaned again, which is something she never, never thought would happen, imagine, didn't know how to deal with, cope with. And she has no place to go and no one to take care of her. When she's taken in by a Vietnamese family, someone that she's only met in a waiting room for her counseling appointments, she starts to realize that family can be with anyone and take so many different forms. This heart, this story will harm your heart as you read about Willow and her impact that she has on those around her, but also the impact that they have on her as well. This is counting by sevens. We got a classic here. This is, oh, if you don't know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. When you think about families, what they mean to each other, what they do for each other, you can't help but think about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So one of the ultimate classics, you will probably follow Charlie Bucket and four other kids as they enter Willy Wonka's amazing chocolate factory. Oh yeah, I mean like, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I mean like, I just, I don't even know how else to describe it. So. They were all chosen because they they found these golden tickets that Willy Wonka found in just five Wonka bars from all over the world. Okay, so they went through Wonka bars, they found these golden tickets. They they are the only people allowed to enter this um this factory for the first time in like forever. Okay, so it's them and one parent to kind of like control them, and then as they enter. Not everything is what it seems, nor everyone is how they appear to one another. Yeah, family plays a huge part in this. You know, Charlie Bucket has his two grandparents, his two grandmothers, his, his mom and his dad. They're all super supportive, you know. But again, also, you know, it's all about making your own family as well. Because as you read through and you get to the end, I'll just I'll just say there there's some additional family members added that weren't initially part of the family again if you've seen the movie you need to read the book i'm just gonna leave it at that there is a sequel to this one as well charlie and the great glass elevator so once you're done with with our factory visit you can totally read about how they go off into space yes that is a true thing i'm telling you right now yeah an amazing story charlie and the chocolate factory Beyond the Bright Sea. So Crow has lived her entire life on this small island off the coast of Massachusetts. She's arrived there though as a baby as her parents sent her there for unknown reasons. So she just arrived on this island, orphaned, and she was raised by Osh, the man who found her, as well as his neighbor who's called Miss Maggie. When she's 12 years old though, she starts to ask questions that there are no answers for because no one knows where she came from, who her parents are, why she was sent. They know nothing about her. When a neighboring, a neighboring island catches on fire and housed a leper colony there, um, people start to wonder if that's where Crow came from. And Crow decides once and for all, she wants to figure out the mystery to her past. Where, like, what, like, what makes her crow, okay? So, she decides to take matters into her own hand to figure out her life story and sets off on a journey of self-discovery. Now, this is based on true events in regard to the use of the various islands in the 1920s off the coast of Massachusetts for things such as a leper colony. Um, but you will be along for this journey with Crow as she sets off on this, on this journey of self-discovery, trying to figure out who she is, and she may realize that she already kind of knows the answers that she wants, that she wants to know. This is Beyond the Bright Sea. And our last one is the mysterious disappear disappearance of Aiden S. as told to his brother. Now Lucas's older brother Aiden has disappeared. No one can find him and everyone is freaking out. 
Six days later, though, Lucas hears this loud thump coming from the attic. And when he goes to explore up there, he finds his older brother up there with this story that he traveled to another world via the dresser drawer. Yeah. As everyone starts to question him, though, and they really don't believe him, because I'm like, would you believe him? Lucas can't help but wonder if that what actually happened is like actually like what Aiden is saying is what actually really honestly happened because there is like way too much detail to be made up and Lucas decides he wants to figure out for himself what is true and what is not so you as the reader will be sucked right in alongside Lucas because you will be having the same questions same thoughts at the same time that um that Lucas is having because you'll be figuring this out as Lucas is figuring this out as well and you'll be trying to solve this mystery right alongside him because you know he wants to make sure like he if his brother's right that's what you do you stand up for it you stand up for your siblings you stand up for your family and that's what Lucas wants to do in the mysterious disappearance of Aiden S. So these are the six of the books that we have here at the library that explore themes of family. What does family mean to you? How families can look different, be different. That's to and that's totally okay. So come on out, check out one of these or we can help you find whatever amazing family story you're wanting to read in the coming weeks. I hope you tune back next week when we have a whole new middle grade book spotlight and I hope you have an amazing week.